Hello everyone, I'm excited to share a new series on Humpty Dumpty points of a triangle with you. So this video will be considered as a prelude to the main course on the properties of Humpty Dumpty points. Let's get started with the basic definitions including the tangent chord theorem and the radical axis of two circles. And we will apply these in the properties and proving the properties of Humpty Dumpty points of a triangle. Let's get started. First, we will start with tangent chord theorem. This acts as the foundation to the entire course. This also goes by the name alternating segment theorem. What is it? Suppose, if I consider a circle and a tangent to it, which passes through one of the endpoints of a chord of the circle. That is, the point of tangency should be one of the endpoints of the chord of the circle. In such a configuration, the angle made by the chord and the tangent equals the angle made by the chord at its circumference. As you could see, the angles marked the theta will be equal. And this is the statement of tangent chord theorem. You may take the acute or obtuse angle, but you have to make sure that the angle subtended is in the alternate segment of the angle that the arc pierces through. So you could see this arc pierces through the angle that is under consideration. Hence, the angle subtended at this arc should be considered for the tangent chord theorem. Okay. So, let's consider the obtuse angle to obtain a similar configuration. This angle is obtuse clearly and you could see that chord PQ subtends the same angle theta which is obtuse on the alternate segment because the segment that intersects the angle under consideration is the one marked. So the alternate one will be this. All right. The proof of this is quite short. Let's take a look at it. We will consider this angle and we will prove the angle subtended here is the same theta. All right, so first, we use the inscribed angle theorem for this. This is a well-known theorem in um, Olympiad geometry or even basic Euclidean geometry that the angle subtended at the circumference will be half the angle subtended at the center of the circle. And since we are considering acute angle, we are good to go with. When you consider obtuse angle, this will not be true. So make sure that you consider acute angle and then if you drop the perpendicular from the center of the circle, say O, at uh, the tangent, we know the foot will be the point of tangency. So this is 90 minus theta. Well, join OQ and observe OP equals OQ to get angle at Q to be also 90 minus theta and that ensues this angle to be 2 theta. Now you can figure out the angle subtended at the circumference that will be half of the angle subtended at the center. So we got this to be theta which is equal to the angle made by the chord with the tangent thus proving the tangent chord theorem. So we will inculcate this configuration couple of times in the Humpty Dumpty points and its properties. Now we will move on to radical axis. What is radical axis? Before learning this, we will give a quick glance on power of a point. So power of a point is defined for a point with respect to a circle. And how is it defined? Consider any line through it to intersect the circle at two points x and y. Maybe it intersects only once, in which case it would be a tangent. So suppose it intersects at uh, two points, namely x and y. Then the power of point P 
with respect to the circle omega equals px times py and now you may wonder why not it is defined for a particular line the reason is the definition goes irrespective of the line you choose to define it the property and the magic underlies or enforces that whatever line you consider through p this value would not change even if you consider the line passing through center or some line that is marginal so in some sense like this you could see that it's tangent in which case both intersection points coincide so x equals y equals t so all these will be equal as an exercise you may try to prove this and the hint that i could suggest is that triangle let's call this point to be m and this point to be n with the property that triangle pxm is similar to triangle p and y you may conclude this result so now let's assume that this is true that the power is invariant of the line so we will only define it with respect to a circle and a point and mind you the point might be inside or on or outside the circle so now we will define something called as radical axis of two circles consider two circles that are intersecting say omega 1 and omega 2 say they intersect at two points a and b then the radical axis of omega 1 comma omega 2 is defined as the locus of points locus of points that have or that possess equal power with respect to omega 1 and omega 2 and this will turn out to be ab the line ab the line determined by the points of intersection so let me draw that so why will this line be the locus of points that possess equal power first we express power of a point p with respect to the circle omega 1 notice that power can be written of any point p it can be expressed as if let's say o1 is the center of first circle o2 is the center of second circle then it's just op square minus r1 square where r1 comma r2 are the radii of circle 1 and circle 2 this is because when you consider the line through the center this distance is o1 p minus r and this distance is o1 p plus r right so it will eventually be o1 p plus r times o1 p minus r that is o1 p square minus r1 square now this needs to be equal to o2 p square minus r2 square for the same point p that's when i can say that it lies on the radical axis of these two circles so this is power of point p with respect to omega 2 this is essentially o1 p square minus o2 p square equal to r1 square minus r2 square which is a constant we know that this is given to us o1 is a constant o2 is a constant and when will so difference of squares be a constant when it lies on a particular perpendicular line joining those two given points so it will look like this if you have o1 and o2 the locus of points p such that o1 p square minus o2 p square is a constant will be a line that is perpendicular to this 
now perpendicular at what point the point that satisfies this relation on the line over root you have to consider the perpendicular line the reason being that if you consider the lines joining to any point p on the locus that we uh, just drew you will get the difference squared is the square of difference of squares of these two distances and this point was initially defined to be the point satisfying this and hence eventually p will also satisfy that relation so thus we conclude that it is a line perpendicular to the line over no2 and hence this will be perpendicular and also it's a line notice that points a and b have power 0 with respect to both circles because they lie on the circle and hence if you consider any line through them the first point of intersection is that point itself making the distance to 0 so hence both lies on the radical axis so they determine the line we know two points determine a line so hence we conclude that for two circles that intersect radical axis is the line joining points of intersection and for two circles that do not intersect it is some line it is some line perpendicular to the line joining centers as shown these are the basics required to understand the properties of humpty and dumpty point we will now get into the humpty definition and its properties in the upcoming video thank you for watching bye